Hello friends subscribe to our channel GDC and press the bell icon for more updates. So welcome to the channel. So today in this video we are going to cover some questions for your GPAD preparations which is very important for your exam. So moving on our first question. The first question is the splitting of the spectral lines under the influence of magnetic field is known as the options are option A is Lorentz effect, option B is Zeeman effect, option C is Doppler's effect or option D is self-reversible. So the correct answer is that is Zeeman effects. So let's discuss with the help of explanation that what is Lorentz effect or what is Zeeman effect. So so first one is the Lorentz force law that it can be used to describe the efforts of a charged particle moving in a constant magnetic field where the Zeeman effect is the effect of splitting a spectral line into several components in the presence of a static magnetic field and it is analogous to the Stark effect the splitting of a spectral line into several components in the presence of electric field. So in, in Zeeman effect we are talking about in presence of magnetic field and in a Stark effect we are talking about the in presence of electric field. So and the where Doppler is Doppler effect causes the received frequency of a source that that is how it is perceived when it gets to its determination to differ from the sent frequency. If there is a motion that is increasing or decreasing the distance between the source and the receiver and where self reversible self reversal is a case of self absorption when a line is self absorbed to such an extent that the peak or central wavelength intensity is less than at the wings or known central wavelength. So at last option B is the correct answer students try to note down these terms because sometimes the question may also ask from these portions. So moving on in second question the second question is the that in the inflorometry the source of irradiation is we have to tell about the source of irradiation and the options are option A is xenon arc lamp option B is hydrogen lamp option C is tungsten lamp or option D is nursed lamp so which is the correct answer or which is the source of irradiation the correct answer is xenon arc lamp let's discuss with the help of explanation that xenon arc lamp is the source of irradiation of fluorometry H2 lamp for UV and tungsten lamp for visible and near IR and nurse lamp for visible near as well as for mid IR students uh, just make the table in your notebook now moving on to the next question that which of the following statement about penicillin is penicillin G is true we have to tell about it that oh, which statement is true about the penicillin G and the options are option A is it is commonly administered orally or option B is it is it has a broad spectrum of antibacterial activity option C is it can be used for the treatment that is red bite fever or it is concomitant proben acid decrease its duration of action so which one is true so the true statement is that it can be used for the treatment of red bite fever it means these are the incorrect one about penicillin G now it's a it's we are having the explanation that it is not effective orally because of breakdown by acid in the stomach and it has short duration of action due to its rapid excretion from kidney through tubular secretion sometimes the question may ask that penicillin G the, through which passage it gets uh, secrete out excrete out so through tubular secretion so probenic, probenic acid decrease its tubular secretion thus can be 
used to prolong its action and it has narrow spectrum activity covering mainly gram positive bacteria now here we have just uh, uh, some uh, that uh, penicillin g is the first choice of drug for which uh, which ones so for syphilis meningococcal meningitis actinomycosis red bite fever yaws or lepto spirosis or group a and b streptococcal infection the is it is a doc for these disease so option c is the correct answer now moving on the next question that autotoxicity of amino glucose and glycoside is in the order of option a is kenamycin is greater than amikycin is greater than net Natalmycin and option B is natalmycin, amikycin or kenamycin. Option C is amikycin, natalmycin, kenamycin. Option D is natalmycin, kenamycin and amikacin. So which one is the correct? The correct one is kenamycin and amikacin and natalmycin. So how can you learn this? K, just take the A and the N. So it means can means ear ear related to sorry ear related to autotoxicity you can learn like this now moving on the next question catherometer used in gas chromatography works on the principle of sensing options are option a is thermal conductivity option b is flow rate option c is viscosity option d is mass so that catheter used in gas chromatography it is clear so and what is the principle the principle is that it says the thermal conductivity here we have a just a simple explanation of catheter you can just write down or just get the understand that here we are a power supply this one is reference and this one is our sample this one is sampler sample and this one is reference so through amplifier we get the readings and it's a output one here uh, just some information about the tcd thermal conductivity detector or catherometer that it is based on changes in thermal conductivity of gas stream it consists of two cells that is reference cell as well as sample cell as we have already observed in the diagram so it is in the form of wheat or st wheat stone bridge and when a carrier gas is passing there is no deflection in galvanometer but when the column effluent is allowed to pass there is deflection in the galvanometer so this deflection is recorded with the help of amplifier which is due to the change in the thermal conductivity so option a is the correct answer now moving on the next question that following indicators is or used in complexometric titrations and the options are option a is Muroxide, option B is ereochrome, option C is dithiazone, or option D is all, all, all the three. So, which one uh, indicators are used in complexometric titration? So, the correct answer is all of the three. Means, uh, Muroxide, students, this is just some technical problem. Uh, here we have a just ereochrome, op uh, ereochrome option. Ereochrome. So, Muroxide, ereochrome, and dithiazone are used in the complexometric titration as an indicator. Now, the next question is that suspensions containing the below agents are supposed to show negative zeta potential. Options here we have just aluminum chloride, subnitrate, monobasic potassium phosphate, sulfamerazine. And the options are that is PQ. B is Q and R, option C is R and S, and option uh, D is Q and S. So, option C is the correct answer. That is R and S, that is monobasic potassium phosphate and sulfamerazine. Here, we have just explanation that suspensions made with the aluminum chloride or bismuth subnitrate are supposed to show positive zeta potential, and those made with monobasic potassium phosphate. And sulfamerazines are supposed to have shown negative zeta potential. Students, write down this. So, option C is the correct answer according to this. Now, next question is that treatment of turmeric powder with acetic anhydride and concentrated sulfuric acid gives. And the options are 
ऑप्शन ए इज येलो कलर ऑप्शन बी इज पिंक कलर ऑप्शन सी इज वॉयलेट कलर ऑप्शन डी इज ग्रीन कलर सो विच वन इज दी करेक्ट आंसर और कलर ऑन ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ विद एसिटिक एनाइड्रेट कंसिडर्ड सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड इट गिवस दॉयलेट कलर Here we have just a next question that drugs that lack the sulfonyl urea moiety but stimulate insulin secretion. Students try to understand the question that is by blocking the sulfonyl receptor on for a KATP that is potassium channels in pancreatic beta cells. And the options are option A is repaglinide, option B is rose glitazone, option C is glipizide, option D is metformin. So, which one of the drug is uh, lack sulfonyl uh, urea moiety and act on uh, stimulation of insulin receptor? And the correct answer is repaglinide. Here we have just explanation, students, about the rose glitazone, glipizide, and metformin that it act as an analog manner by binding sulfonyl urea receptor as well as other receptor students. Try to note down in your notebook about these three drugs properties. So. Option A is the correct answer. Now, moving on the last question of this video, students, which of the following alkaloid are derived from tryptophan? And the options are option A is hyoscyamine and morphine, option B is codeine and reserpine, option C is reserpine and quinine, and option D is ephedrine and codeine. So, which one of the alkaloid are derived from tryptophan? And the correct answer is reserpine and quinine. So, here we have just explanation, students, that tropane, phenanthrene, that uh, hyoscyamine is derived from tropane and morphine derived from phenanthrene, codeine derived from phenanthrene, reserpine from derived indole and ephedrine from phenylethylamine. So, at last, option C is the correct answer. So, students, this is all about this video. I hope you like the video. So, thanks for watching.